two aspects to it. Uh, the first one is that as a personal one. So this is something that's, that's been part of my life um, since I was a teenager. So, you know, depression and anxiety are, are, are a daily thing for me. Um, and so you learn, you experience. Um, but the other thing is when we moved here to the Philippines three years ago, um, and I already knew this from my wife who is from the Philippines, um, there is a kind of a stigma associated here with um, um, both, you know, with mental illness, um, with, with depression, with anxiety. And, and it's something I, I, I want to, for lack of a better word, destigmatize and, and, and have people appreciate that, you know, you, you take care of your physical health. Why not your mental health? And then all of a sudden, people are now thrown into this unfamiliar ter territory. And in fact, as you've mentioned earlier, it causes strained relationships, a lot of health problems, because people don't know how to navigate through this whole, you know, this, this situation. And so a lot of um, men and women are now suffering from as you've mentioned, depression and anxiety. And I'm here to just share with you, you know, some of my own personal, my, my personal stories on how I was able also to cope in this very challenging situation. And I personally have experienced um, not being mentally well. I was burned out. I was anxious. I was also very irritable with people I love. And now, thankfully, after I've discovered some of these um, practical techniques, then definitely I'm hoping that a lot of people will benefit from them. We are in an endless journey, but it depends on our perspective in life you know Dina as they say in life we must continue our journey and I believe in the saying never stop learning in life because life never stops teaching and your advocacy through the various webinars is one of the effective tools that your group is doing. And I believe that during these days, any leader has been exposed to one of a kind, challenging situations and unprecedented crisis since the start of the pandemic in 2020. And no one can predict until when it will end. But the end does not justify the means as we know. So like our journey, just continue move on huh? enjoy the journey more than the destination because life always offers the strike of the dawn and when the dawn strikes it gives you more blessings more opportunities call in continuous improvement, uh, it is really time to rethink the way we do business, uh, especially the way we make products, the way we serve our clients, okay, and the way we make money, right? Because the environment has changed. So even before the pandemic started, uh, this, these strategies are really vital to any corporation, especially because of competition, changes in technology, the pandemic just accelerated the need for change. So that got me really fascinated with this whole world of mind-body medicine, lifestyle medicine, and, and really living your life to the fullest, you know, not just going through the motions, but really um, discovering your purpose, sharing your purpose with the world, feeling energized and excited about your life. And um, that 
pushed me back into the um, clinical world. And I started working in functional medicine, which is a lot about gut health and vitamins and supplements and looking at root causes. And I worked in integrative psychiatry. So looking at more, again, root causes to things like anxiety and depression and, and things like that. So throughout all of that, I just, I wanted more, I wanted to learn more. Uh, so I became an integrative medicine fellow with Dr. Andrew Weil. And I then decided I was going to leave clinical practice. I was like, I have all this knowledge. I've learned so much. I want to do more. I want to share this on a wider scale. And that's when I, I started Live Greatly and my podcast and more speaking and teaching and um, all the things that I'm doing now, just really to empower people to realize that we have a lot more control over our health and well being than uh, I think most of us believe. my years of working and being involved with different companies and different people um, and seeing a lot of bad, right? Seeing a lot of lack of integrity. Um, I've realized how important it is. So I think it's one of those things you take for granted until you see that people don't have it. And then you almost think, how do you not have it? Right? It's kind of like air. Like you don't, you don't think about air every day until you're swimming underwater. And then you're like, wow, I need to take a breath. And so um, you know, I've, I've seen, um, people that don't have integrity and, um, and I realized how much that impacts me as a working professional and just as a human. And so, you know, when we talk about core values and mission statements and all the, the corporate lingo, I always think to myself, all of it really just kind of threads back to integrity. That's, that is the thing. And so over the last, I would say probably two or three years, the more that I thought about what I look for, so when I'm hiring a, a person or what I look for in a friend is really integrity. And I really believe you kind of have it or you don't. Um, it can be little things or it can be big things. Now, what's also funny about it is 100% of the humans out there will say that they have integrity. No one in the world will say, I don't have integrity. Uh, uh, everyone says it. So it's not something that, um, that you could really ask for or look for. It's just based on actions. All right, so it's me, the left brain training, but there is something missing, you know? As a creative person, there is something missing. And then I stumbled upon with the design thinking. And I've been searching on what is this design thinking and I'm applying it already. Uh, I applied this. I applied this to my company and to my department. And it's, so, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I discovered the power of design thinking and the turnaround. And my productivity, it's so phenomenal. It's, um, how do I say it? It's, uh, the, the change is enormous. So uh, I've been discussing this to my office mates about design thinking. And then they're laughing about me. They're laughing about it because... They thought it's something like a weird methodology. You, can ju you just came up, came up with this idea. The, so they were like, can you please stop saying design thinking? Everything is design thinking. It was like, can you just finish the work? And, you know, because creative people, it's not appreciated you know, in, uh, in office. We know that. You know that, okay? Um, if you're going to search the eight mudas, eight mudas, the eight skills that's been rejected or not used in the companies is creativity, okay? But that's why most of the uh, creative department is uh, seen as seen as support department. Okay, there is no value. Um, but in, if you're going to look at the kaizen, the eight mudas is the unused skills, which is creativity or human skills. creativity is actually intelligence having fun and it is what you call a transferable skill so which means regardless of what industry you are if you're in fashion which I was from and I am from or you transfer to creating courses you transfer to perhaps another kind of industry when you have creativity 
that's the spark that leads you to start developing new things, innovating. And so it was creativity. That was the spark for me to move from fashion to actually developing, creating courses or coaching programs or training like what we do to help people affect positive change. And I started to speak up. That was what I needed to do, to speak up and stand up and be seen. And when I came back from London, I dressed in a more professional way and that was all it needed. My clients started to look up to me. My staff started to look up to me. And also very soon, within one month, I started to conduct modeling courses and grooming courses for the ladies. That was like ages ago, really ages ago. And that was how I developed my confidence. And that made me think, every day, the opportunity is there. And whether we want to take it up or not, because we never know. And every day, we are facing the world. The minute we walk out of our bedroom, we are facing the world. So we really need to dress the part, look the part, behave the part, so that when people look at us, they are inspired by our image. Because even though it's appearances, it's not anything, but appearances count. It's the thing that gets things started. My Beautiful Connection. It's a mix of mental wellness and relationship building. Uh, so this is a compilation of things that I have learned um, from the past three decades, from the last three decades of my life, my working mm -hmm. life. So um, it will be launched hopefully this year. Um, I'm taking time. Unlike before, I have to rush everything. Now I'm taking time. I owe it to the readers. So this mm -hmm. is about um, relationship with yourself with God with other people with your work work um workmates so hopefully this will help a lot in terms of managing yourself managing your emotions and building your own career and balancing work and family I have stopped using the word retirement it is a, such a passive word that connotes just the act of leaving one's job and ceasing to work. In other words, it is just a simple point in time. In 2004, I did just that at the age of 54. What happened after, however, is a whole different ball game. And I tried to look for the word that would describe that period that evolved in my life. And I came up with the word cruising. From my first book, Carolina Cruising to an American Dream, I defined cruising as a pace of life, a slow drive for sustained enjoyment. You know, after studying hard until you're in your mid-20s, working hard until you're in your mid-50s, sometimes for some people it's mid-60s, you know, you arrive at this particular period in your life, which can be an enviable state. You know what? It also is a good long one if you pre prepared hard for it. It could be 20, 30 or more years. Science says that it's possible for our bodies to last for 150 years. Would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> but I believe, you know, Dino, you know, there are three factors that lead you to this time of your life to be enviable. Mm -hmm. One, financial freedom. Two, physical fitness. And three, emotional stability. Uh, I'd like to start off by putting it in the right perspective, Dino. I think leadership is leadership and it's essential to any interaction or any, um, any management of any organization. You know, managing is a big challenge, that's one. But part of management is leadership. But if I may take a look at that another perspective, leadership is even a bigger ball game than management itself. Um, I'd like to say, well, management is optimizing 
the use of the various resources that any organization, any society, any country has. I mean, you're talking about financial resources, you're talking about equipment, you're talking about processes, systems, and you manage it by trying to optimize what it can do best or most so that it can help achieve or help the company or the organization achieve its goals. Now, leading is part of managing, but it specifically focuses on one valuable resource. And to my, in my book, at any time, the most valuable, not only resource, but the most valuable wealth or treasure of any organization, any society, or any country. And I'm talking about people. And people are always managed best and um, being driven best by good leadership. And leadership, therefore, is essential at any circumstance, at any situation. And particularly, now that we're putting it into context, we're talking about leadership under crisis, especially, most especially, during a time of crisis or challenging times, trying times. Well, I mean, we've been through many of that, but I guess there's really uh, very few, if ever any, uh, that can compare to the current crisis that we are all undergoing globally. That's this pandemic. Yes, leadership is essential. It is critical at any point in time. But I would think um, I would have to agree with you in picking out the topic. It is most even more important during a time of crisis like this.